Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You have turned in, tuned in to today's Sagu Sports Network feature basketball broadcast featuring your Sagu Lions playing host to the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma, Drovers. And you are looking live on the court right now here in the Schaefer Center in Waxahachie, Texas. And it'll be less than two and a half minutes before we get the uh, opening festivities started. But let's just look at the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference standings. USA comes in, USAO comes in to the, this evening at a undefeated clip in conference play, only losing two overall games. And one of those losses is to Wayland Baptist. And the other loss is to Southwestern Christian University. And uh, they have posted four straight wins coming into tonight. So they're looking very strong, uh, a strong champion type contender for this year's women's basketball in the Sooner Athletic Conference. They are going to be hard to handle, and uh, they feature a young lady, Zaria Dorsey. She is very good, 6'1", junior, and she will be a treat to watch. And on the other side, you have your Sagu Lions, which has uh, had a little tough go of it uh, so far, and Coach Sons, the first year head coach of these Lady Lions. He's posted one win, uh, which was a good win against Oklahoma Panhandle State and uh, um, lost uh, overall five others, but they are still one and two, so that puts them right in the middle of the pack uh, for the Sooner Athletic Conference. And uh, they have a shot. Their chemistry is starting to uh, bond a little better, and uh, these young ladies, the, the, your, your Lady Lions, are, are playing um, with more confidence and uh, just the more experience factor is starting to pay off. It's going to be a tough road to hoe this evening against this very tough and tall USAO team. But the quickness of your Lady Lions could be a difference maker. And if they come out shooting well, which they're averaging 30 shots from the three-point land a game. If they can convert a high percentage, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Drovers to uh, really be accurate themselves to walk out of here with a win. So that's what we're looking for. That's the breakdown. We're going to take you courtside right now for the pregame festivities, the opening prayer, National Anthem, starting lineups. Play this contest that you will be glorifying through all that we do and say. Keep each uh, individual uh, player safe, official safe. May we glorify you. We love you. We ask these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallant. 
And there you have it, the starting lineups of this first part of the doubleheader, uh, basketball doubleheader on the Sagu Sports Network. And you see the teams lined up, ready to go. Jump ball tip is up. A little fumbling on the tip, but USAO has first possession. Spoke with Coach. Matthews of the Drovers and uh, he spoke of uh, this starting lineup that he has is very methodical and you will see them pass the ball around a lot in a half court offense they're not going to get up and down uh, quite like uh, maybe his B team would so later on you may see them push the pace just a little bit but uh, uh, be prepared to see that young lady on the foul line and in the paint scoring a lot this this evening um, and that is Zaria Dorsey number 24 that's going to be out uh, after the miss the, the second miss um, by Dorsey or second free throw by Dorsey DeRoe bring up the ball for the first time for your lady row mistaken pass in a very crowded lane creates a turnover unforced down to Zaria Dorsey she goes in nice drive off the board a little hard no good Kiara Glenn Glenn with a good strong drive to the basket as you'll see here coming down the left side of the paint. She saw the opening and gets the foul. Shooting foul. Two shots for Kiara Glenn.
first one is no good. Kerry Glenn, usually pretty good free throw shooter coming in tonight at 65%. It's all knotted up at one. Chastain gets a good interception there, but throws it away long. It's just a reset for the Drovers. Drovers get it over. Beautiful looking shot from the three-point land. Nice rebound. And that was Carrera with the rebound and the putback for two. DeRoe sees an opening. It gets tipped, it looks like. Kind of an air ball, but it probably wouldn't have been an air ball without the good defense of the Drovers. Another miss from three-point land by James. Chastain in a little bit of a trap. Gets tipped away, but DeRoe gets it. She hands off to Kieran Glenn. Glenn resets in this half-court offense that Coach Suns is designed up and methodically going to approach this game. Try to slow it down just a little bit to keep uh, the Drovers at bay. But the Drovers will elect to methodically play a half-court game as well. At least three passes. That was the fourth pass to the elbow. Zaria Dorsey. Just be prepared. You'll hear her name a lot. She comes in averaging 19 points a game and nine rebounds a game. It was a tough pass, although well executed by Metter. Casher just could not handle it. Off shot from about 15. Like he was going to create a double dribble turnover. And that's going to go back to the Drovers. It will inbound from the side. They get it immediately down to Dorsey. Dorsey falls down on a move to the basket now. The Lions get a fast break opportunity. Gets it out to Metter. She misses the three-point shot. That's going to be Drover's ball off of Kasher as she goes, tips the, the rebound attempt out of bounds. Oh, that's going to be too easy for Zaria Dorsey. Very long pass. Recognizing Dorsey open in the paint. Looked like Coach Suns tried to throw a, a quick half-court trap at that offense, the drove offense. Chastain, nice turnaround, little fadeaway from about 10 feet. Sagu gets their first field goal. Beautiful shot from three. Not sure. Who that was. We'll get uh, the name right in just a little bit. Oh, that was Bloomfield. For the Drovers first three. Johnson will bring up the ball. Dorsey, quick look from about 17. That's a nice rebound. And then Metter gets the second rebound. And a line change, lineup change for Coach Sons and Lady Lions. Kara Glenn with a long shot, no good. Casher couldn't get her hands on it. Johnson with a nice 
Finn dribbled to get out of trouble. And she collects a foul, or she draws a foul. That looks like that's going to be on the rope. Carrera instantly down to Zarya. Zarya with the give and go to Carrera. Easy two for USAO. The very intentional and methodical offensive play like seems like every this. play is a designed play by coach Matthews and working very effectively taking their time and creating a high rate of return be sure to uh, if you're watching us on one of the uh, social platforms like Facebook or Twitter YouTube sure to engage with us on the chat we'll feature your comments right there uh, below the um, game screen and uh, love to hear from you tweet at us or look us up on Sagu Sports Network on one of our social tours talk to us about the game Kara Glenn comes down defense blocks are out That's Metter from the corner. In and out. Carrero, nice move. Then dishes down to the baseline for to Zaria Dorsey for a seven-foot baseline jumper. And she makes that look too easy. That is a very difficult shot. Kira Glenn gets it to Duro. Patience with the Lady Lions looking. DeRoe gets an opening. It bounces twice off the back of the rim. No good. Easily pulled down by Carrera. Carrera is now pushing the pace just a little bit. And that's going to be off the hands. And I believe that was created by Kiara Glenn to deflect that back off the hands of Carrera. Sagu, Lady Lions basketball. And kind of a one forward start out of uh, this half court offense creating a lot more movement than we're used to seeing in half court and that was a great lean in on the left side which is Kasher's uh, predominant side to try to get that layup off and she gets fouled easy call for the ref she gets two that's going to go against Zaria Dorsey I think if you coach sons, you just want to you want to just take it at Dorsey as much as possible and try to get her in some kind of foul trouble. Two quick ones from the charity stripe for Casher. Dorsey, no good from about ten on the side. Lauren Baker in now, point guard duties. And that's a long range three by Mendoza. Oh, a little bit of a broken play. But Palmer makes really good at it as she's cutting to the basket and just kind of lofts it up and uses the window to cash in. Casher took her chance at a three, no good. Now Drover's really creating a much faster pace in this game. Too hard off the glass for Palmer, but Carrera gets the rebound, gets it out to James, and James makes good for her second three-pointer of the first quarter. Just a little more than two minutes left in the first quarter. Mendoza looking. She hit her last one. 
A little long there. Casher, big rebound, a lot of contact. No call. Drovers get it up, a cutting Carrera. Carrera left-handed, does get it to fall. That was very pretty. Well executed, fast break play. And you see what I was talking about in the pregame. USAO can put up a lot of points in a hurry. They've posted a couple 90-point games this year already. Creating more fast break opportunities off of rebounds. And the 6-1 Dorsey doing cleanup work for Johnson as she, Johnson got two rebounds uh, or two attempts and a rebound and couldn't convert. Dorsey said, I can convert that. That's going to be a kickball on the Drovers. Inbound play now coming at you from the baseline for the Lady Lions. Chastain checks in for Sydney Metter. Got Mendoza, Baker, Chastain. Kiara Glenn gets the ball in. Chastain going to try to take it herself, and she does with a reverse layup. Fantastic move. Little trap. Drovers toss it back out to the perimeter. They go to the well. And Zaria Dorsey. Dorsey with a little fancy footwork and ball handling. Goes on the left side with an easy conversion. Dorsey with a lot already. That long shot was... No good. But Hannah comes down with the rebound. There was a foul on the ground. It's going to result into an inbounds play for the Lady Lions from the baseline. Quickly gets it into Baker. Baker tries the three-point shot. No good. And the Drovers are off to the races again. Finding it easy to create shots on the fast break. Baker with a block. A great defensive attempt. And they're going to get the Drovers with a foul trying to assess who that is going to be on. What a great effort by Lauren Baker to get her hand on that as, as a block on that perimeter shot. That's the end of the first quarter. The Drovers have posted 25 points, 15 point lead. And at this pace, they may hit 100. They could keep it up. Coach Sun's got to come over and draw up a little more of a defensive pressure plan. To try to keep Dorsey, uh, the ball out of the hands of Dorsey. You're looking in. Right now to OCU's uh, first game up in Kansas at Central Christian. OCU returning favorite in the Sooner Athletic Conference in the women's basketball department. They're very, very good. This will be their first game of the season, actually. And you can see they have not played, nor has John Brown played a game. John Brown will be back in action next week. You see Oklahoma City at the bottom of the standings right now, but it will not take them long to post a few wins uh, and get uh, right up there in the top contention with Wayland and USAO. And Mac U, you can't sleep on Mac U. They've been performing well uh, already in 2021 right second quarter action here in the first of a featured double header basketball extravaganza on the Sagu Sports Network USAO Drovers get possession nice ball movement 
Just a little long off the glass. Lions convert. Herrera, head fake, and gets it down in the corner. Palmer, thought about it, nope. And that's gonna be an infraction against the Drovers, giving it back to the Lady Lions. Lady Lions desperately need to have some back-to-back -back conversions here. DeRoe slowly bringing up the ball. We'll take a pick, no, pulls up from long range, short again. Oh, nice drop pass to the cutting baseline. Movement of Palmer, Palmer converts, but that was a fantastic pass by Doring Speranza. That's going to be a foul on Palmer for the Drovers. Two shots coming to Tamara DeRoe. have the ball. 13 point lead. Little running jumper, no good. And that's going to go to the Lions. It's a little 50-50 ball between Doring, Speranza, and Kasher. For that rebound, referees decide it goes to the Lions. Mendoza checks in for Lauren Baker. Mendoza is the only one that's hit from long range this evening. Matter gets the ball. Little wheel. Run, two passes, gets it to DeRoe. DeRoe with the 13 footer and she converts. Nice half-court set there. Doring Speranza gets fouled from the back, it looks like. I think they're going to get Mendoza with that. She gets two free ones. Doring Speranza converts her first, and she is filling in the big man duties down in the paint for Zaria Dorsey. While Dorsey gets a breather on the bench. Chesting out. Metter. Kasher, Kira Glenn, DeRoe, and Mendoza. Matter almost had the opening she wanted. Nice pass by DeRoe. No foul call there in the paint. Looked like Kasher went up strong. Probably should have gotten two shot foul call, but no call by the ref. Quick inbounds play. A little hard off for Metter. She just can't find the basket yet in this game. And the Lady Lions need Metter to step up. Do what she normally does. She's the leading scorer for this team. Yeah. 
Nice look. No good. Mendoza gets the rebound, gets it in to DeRoe. DeRoe off to the races. All the lanes filled, so DeRoe decides to take it herself. She gets bumped. But no call. And Drovers get the ball. They start to push it up. Number one, two gets Kara Glenn for the foul. Tough shot. Almost went in. For Guerrero. Long range. Kiara Glenn doesn't go. Matter trying to mix it up to get the rebound. No good. Drovers off to the races now. Great ball movement by the Drovers. A lot of unselfish play. Always looking for the open shot. That was just too long. And Kasher with another rebound. The road taking her time. Setting up a half court offense. And a lot of contact there on defense. And they get, I believe, Palmer with that foul against Alexis Kasher. It's going to be on the floor, so no shots needed just yet. That's a timeout by Coach Sons and the Lady Lions. Teams to their benches trying to review this, this game plan. Coach Sun chipping away at that lead a little bit. Still 13, but uh, the Drovers not driving away like they did in the first quarter. So Coach Sons can continue to slow it down and get his ladies to convert some more buckets. I think his game plan is to methodically try to create that half-court offense, what we would call small ball, and just chip away at the lead, make it manageable by halftime. Glenn to DeRoe, running the wheel up top again. Mendoza with another shot, rattles in and out. James off from long range. And immediately, Zaria Dorsey comes in, grabs a rebound, and puts it right back in. She is a scoring machine. Lady Lions running a perimeter wheel set. Trying to create some open action in the lane. And now, Sydney Metter gets on the board with her first two coming in the middle of the second quarter. Coach Suns desperately needs to get his leading score in the offensive action of the game. But they're going to have to slow down the Dorsey train. Nice move. Gets in off the back of the iron. And that is Johnson with her first two, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to have visiting the broadcast booth right now, head coach of your Sagu Lions men's team. And that is the row from the top. The bank is open. Coach Delton Deal. We're doing great, man. Let's cut on your mic. There it is. Yes, sir. Good to have you. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Good to see you healthy. Back yes, in sir. action. And we could talk a little bit about uh, your upcoming matchup and, and maybe the last couple games. I yep. have a few questions for you yeah. about that. As, uh, as we see Lady Lions trying to chip in to some of this, this big lead and powerhouse of USAO. Have you been able to uh, 
catch any of this game Yeah, yet. I've just been watching a little bit here in the end of the first quarter and a little bit at the beginning of the second quarter. Um, just got in and got to see how things are going. Yeah. Well, USAO, I, I don't know if you've seen the white paper on USAO uh, for this season, but they're the real deal. Yeah, they can shoot the ball. And uh, Zaria, number 24, and Zaria uh, Dorsey, uh, I think she's probably a good, strong candidate for player of the year already. 6-1, junior, and uh, she makes good things happen every time she touches the ball. That's a big three right there. Uh, much needed for Coach Suns and his Lady Lions. Yeah, it seemed like we settled in a little bit here in this quarter and kind of you know, got our legs under us and looked like we're playing a little more confidently and getting back in the game. Hopefully it's fine. Yeah, and, and really, the, the Lady Lions are not playing bad other than it's just been a struggle, which has been the kind of the mantra as of late, getting the ball in the basket. They're getting good looks. Yeah. They just got to convert. Yeah, it seems but, like we've uh, gone on a few droughts and yeah. uh, gone on some stretches where we didn't score the ball well, but they're competing and they're out here fighting and trying to make something happen. So They really are. And uh, running a good half-court set offense, not not taking bad shots necessarily. They just uh, shots that are not going. Even though Lauren Baker right there from about uh, 22, um, a little bit long range even for her. She takes a lot of threes, but... Uh, they're used to kind of seeing that go in in the past. And uh, it has been, like you said, kind of a drought over the last few games. And once they get that going, I think they're going to be much more competitive For sure. here in the future. Mendoza gets her hands on it, but it goes to Duro. Duro trying to push it up really fast, gets it to Metter. Metter back to Baker. Baker almost in. Two bounces off the front, no good. No call there. But uh, oh, Drovers, yeah. Good shot. That was, like I say, most of these shots are open. They're not bad shots that the Lions are taking. That's going to be a, look like it could go as a charge. I think they're going to ring up Metter for a block. Yeah, that, she definitely took that one. Yeah, she was there. Definitely there. Refs didn't see it. Coach Suns trying to argue his case respectfully. And there you have it. He gets a couple in, a couple new. Bodies in, and that's uh, Hannah and Chastain in. Chastain's a, a good power player for this team man, as a, a new player. Yeah, she's young. She's athletic. I like how she gets up and down the floor, plays with a high motor. Yeah, she um, does. Skills are coming along. Gets a little better every game, and that's really what you wanted to see is she gets more comfortable. It's a young player trying to get better. That's number 21, Chastain. DeRoe bringing the ball up. Just under two minutes in this second quarter or the first half. Hannah gets a good cut. Gets, gets it over to Chestang. Chestang just can't convert. Falls away a little bit. You'd like to see a big body like that go more lean into the glass instead of playing away from the glass. Yeah, once again, great action. Yep. The ball goes inside. We get a cut. Get the ball back to the cutter. Get a good look at the rim. And I'm sure. Just got to convert some opportunity. Coach uh, Sons will work with her on that particular maneuver because she can definitely score when she puts her mind to it. Metter with the left hand draws the foul. She's going to get two free ones. So talk to us. Uh, you're, you're back at home. Had a yeah. couple uh, road games, right? We had one road game uh, on the road. John yeah. Brown. John Brown on the road on and, Saturday. And uh, I was able to uh, see that. That was a, it was a really good game yeah. up there. But you guys. It was a good finish. Yeah, it was a good finish. <laughs> you good guys finish. Uh, struggled from the, yeah. the field for most of that game. But right there at the end, your your senior leadership yep. or, or veteran play really sure. stepped up. Uh, talk to us about how you. You, were you at a panic stage of losing that game uh, at all? I don't think I was in a panic stage. I think that um, with the way this year is, to be honest with you, it's just uh, it's one of those things where every day is a new day, and I, don't, I think it's really hard to know what you're going to get from everybody. And, you know, we, we took a long Christmas break. We haven't had a ton of practices. You know, I was out for a little bit, and I wasn't there. And so, you know, and throughout this whole season, it's really been about overcoming a little bit of adversity, even though we're not as detailed as we probably usually are at this point of the year. You know, just it, we can control our effort and we can control how hard we play. And 
it was our first road game of the year. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it's like, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a pretty long road trip. Very too, long right? road trip. It's it not like an, you. It was. You just wake up going no. to Texas Wesleyan. Right. Yeah, uh, it's a good. They, they're up in Arkansas. Yes. How, what kind of road trip is that? Uh, yeah, it's a two-day road trip, and wow. it's a little bit. Uh, it was the first time we had done it this year too, and you know we have, we have a pretty young group, <laughs> and um, you know we have a. Uh, I think that we just we rushed a little bit at the beginning. We didn't shoot the ball very well. I think uh, we weirdly, I mean, watching the film, we actually got a lot of great looks. We just weren't making them. And, you know, it got behind and didn't play great for a while. But at the end, whenever it became time to shake off the nerves and you kind of, you know, last few minutes of winning time, you just play as hard as you can. And I think we kind of turned back into what we are. And, you know, we're, we're making strides and we're getting better every day. I think it's a work in progress. And, you know, we've been telling our guys, you know, every time you play this year is a celebration of, of playing basketball so just enjoy it play with joy um, have fun and don't stress out as much about maybe you know some details and some results that you normally would I think that putting that pressure on yourself right now with limited time to fix it is hard. Miller with a big three there they're converting at a high rate from the perimeter the drovers are well uh, you, it's great to go on the road and get a win no matter who no you doubt. play but going up to John Brown that's a tough place to play um John Brown's always going to be tough at home. So walking away with a win, I know you are absolutely delighted. But coming off of a loss yeah. makes that even bigger, especially yeah. in conference yeah. play, yeah. in a, an abbreviated uh, conference play uh, this um, this uh, COVID year, I guess uh, you could say. So a lot of different things happening. Every, every win always you know, is, yeah. is yeah. going to be a big deal, but even more so yeah. this year. And if you look at the way the game that we played, you know, it was a tough way to lose the game. And I'm so glad bouncing, you brought that up. Bouncing back from that, you know, um, it's funny because, you know, that Wayland game, you know, we, we got to the end of the game and we didn't finish very well. I think that was a um, first time in the situation. This is one of the, one of the unique situations. We played one game in the first semester, so this is one of the unique situations of limited game time. Right. Now you're in a conference game in a tight space. And, you know, I'm looking at my assistant. like, can we call this play? And he's like, I don't know if we know it. <laughs> and we're laughing and we're like, <laughs> we're like okay. But, you know, um, you know, I'm proud of how they fought and how they bounced back. And coming off that, we could have, you know, you know, you can take your season one way or another. And I think that sure. probably hung over a little bit in that first half of John Brown. But we found a way to bounce back and played well. And I uh, found a way to yeah. win. And I think that, you know. Shrug, shrugging that off would be good. And, and you're talking about the, the overtime actual loss. Yes. Um, but uh, l let's just talk real real talk about that game. You had that game in hand at the I end. Did. And uh, it was yours to lose. It was. Um, and when we say to lose, uh, Waylon, it, 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 nothing could go wrong for them but to tie yeah. that game up at the end. Uh, the, the, the referees made... The, the calls, I don't I want to say necessarily they are the right calls, but uh, they made every step that had to be taken to had get to Waylon right, back. And it just happened to and go it their just way. Happened. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was kind of funny because I almost, as I was calling that game, um, I, I made a little light of it, and I probably shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time we were up 13 with uh, just uh, two minutes and 30 seconds yeah. left or something. And... Um, and I, I had just kind of jokingly said, you know, well, you know, it, it's rare, but uh, it yeah. could happen. Yeah. I didn't really mean it, uh, so I've got to come and clean here. And, um, and Waylon, they, they're going to be a tough out. Yeah, I, they I'm did. saying I mean, all that. They're going to be – they play really good together. Yeah, and if you watch them, I mean, the game before us, when they played Tex Wesley, and it had almost the same situation. I think yeah. they were down 20 and came back and won. So at the end of the game, you have to step up and win and – to be honest with you, we got a little we got a little panicky. I think um, we got a little tight and did a couple made a couple b crucial errors. And obviously, there were some calls there at the end that impacted the game. But yeah. you know, the reality is, if we score a basket or make one more shot right. or don't turn it over, then yeah. we win the game anyway. So. No one call, w no. unless it's right at the buzzer, I guess. But uh, you you had a couple opportunities to turn that around. We did, and um, and it. The game looked good. You guys looked good to, to considering you didn't have the practice. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, we can't really say that you're in, in mid-season basketball form. You're in no, the beginning in of the, the, <laughs> the season basketball form. You guys... Um, and, and uh, you know, we try at Sagu Sports Network not to be biased, mm -hmm. uh, and, and especially I, I, I try to worry. I don't want to seem like the homer, but I'm just uh, from the eye test. 
it looks like you guys uh, are able to field the deepest, best talented team on the court all the time. Uh, and, and and I haven't seen everybody yeah. in the conference. We, we've kind of seen some video, and we've looked at it. Mm -hmm. But you guys have tremendous talent. You're missing two of your top yeah. talents. Uh, so, um, But we can't do anything about no, that. And we call it like we see it. You still got a lot of talent. Yeah. Is it? Is it the chemistry yeah. that is what's going to be the, the what makes you a contender at the end? Yeah, I love this team. You know, they're they're, they're really great people. They really are, and um, I can say that about everybody, top to bottom, on our line in our roster. I've just I've loved the way they carry themselves. I like how they interact with each other. I like their. Um, you know, and obviously their ability, they're good players. Um, you know, we've had a, it's been an interesting year. You know, obviously we don't have Nick Mason from last year who's coming off his ACL and is in rehab and was close to getting back. And we just uh, just kind of decided, you know, give him a little time and let him get better. And then, um, you know, we've had some other issues with our, some of our other players. You know, Joshua Kashila hasn't played this year. He's going to actually get to play tonight. So, wow. um for the first time, he hasn't practiced a lot, but he's going to play. Sure. So finally, get back and um, and you know, we had a couple guys that um, that decided to um, just be safer after the break, is how I'll put it. Yeah, and didn't right, come, and so right. it, it kind of limited our post depth a little sure. bit. And we're definitely a little bit different than we were. But everybody, you know, what I like about our team is it doesn't matter who's playing what role or who's right. doing what. Our guys have stepped up and really done what they're supposed to do. And so at this point, you know, usually by this time of year, you've you've had so many games, you've figured out everyone's role, you know what they can do and what they can't. Right. And we're in this process, and unfortunately, we're in the middle of our conference season. And it's and you know the sooner is is not for the faint of heart. So we're, <laughs> we're in the middle all. of the Sooner and right. um, we're trying to figure these things out. And so I think some days we're going to look like a great basketball team. And I think some days we're just going to, it's going to be a work in progress. And I think that's just how you have to approach this year. And so like, I, like I've been saying this whole time and I mean it, it's just about having joy right now and playing, yeah. being yourself yeah. and playing and don't let these uncontrollables control your who you are and right. that's it and that's where we can be and it yep. is what it is and you do have a great group of guys the attitudes are mm -hmm. uh really good top to bottom i mean you usually it that's hard to find and uh especially in a team uh, the way you've designed this team to be able to play uh, a game in and game out. You play everybody. Yeah, we try. Uh, I mean, uh, you really do, though. I mean, yeah. uh, y it looks like you feel comfortable and you're creating long-term, um, you you're completing a strategy long-term because yeah. when you get to the end of the year, no your last guy on the bench is going to have significant experience. Well, I think like what, we, what we've been talking about, I mean, we don't know who will be there every day. Right. I mean, honestly, right. you can't yeah, control this is, who will. This, th so th this season at this is point of the year, we're playing games. We haven't played very much. They're all having good practices, and, you know, it's all up and down a little bit. And, our, and like we said, our um, conditioning is probably not where we would like it to be right now. So, you know, we're trying to make sure we get everybody in there see who can give us what who's gonna show up when the lights are on and then you know hopefully we can come up with a good rotation whenever we get late in the games and if we do happen to miss some guys like we have all year we've had guys out pretty much every game when you do then the guy that you know you're not putting somebody in who's just deer in the headlights because they've never played a minute they're ready right. and they're and they're ready to go and it's been working for us now and hopefully we can keep doing it. and I mean like all basketball it comes down to making shots but you know sure. if we out there and play hard then I think you can overcome some of that yep and there you've heard it from the proverbial <laughs> horse's mouth <laughs> head coach Delton Dill of your Sagu men's basketball team. Coach, thank you so thank much you. for taking time thank to so come much. up and talk to the fans yeah. and uh, myself about how this season's going. We expect great things. You've got a great group of guys. And, uh, you know, I, I know I'm a little biased. I think you're the best head coach in the Sooner Athletic Thank Conference, you. which is the best conference in the nation. <laughs> um, and, I, and I, again, say that biasly as well, <laughs> I know. But it legitimately is probably one of the top That's three in, in everybody's opinion. So we're going to see some great basketball. Be sure to stay tuned for the second half of this uh, part one of the doubleheader. But you're not going to want to miss the men's uh, game. There are a couple special players that uh, both teams will have on this floor. Uh, well, let, real quick, let's tell it, break yeah. it down. USAO tonight. Very, very, very good team. So they're undefeated right now. They're top 10 team in the country. 
Um, they've got a lot of scores. Um, they've got some size. They can shoot the ball. Um, they've got three dynamic ball handlers that are very, very good with the ball. Um, you know, everybody that steps on the floor can play. So they're a very good deep team, and it'll it'll take everything we got in here to play this game today for sure. Well, the only undefeated team uh, that has actually played, yeah. <laughs> and there you see the uh, men's basketball Sooner athletic conference standings. That we have a few teams that just have not actually played yet um, in conference play. Uh, so that th those numbers are going to vastly change sure. very quickly, and we're going to see some rise, some bounce down. But, uh, but they've had uh, a, they've had they've got a lot of games yep. in, and they're playing well, and they're probably a little further ahead than most people in their wow. continuity, and they've got a lot of returners. So, yep. um, and they're extremely talented. So yep. it's a very good team. Yep. It's, it's we, gonna we're used to seeing we uh, the Drovers come in yep. with a very athletic yep. team. So I think the pace of this game For is sure. probably going to be ramped up right from the get go. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be fun to watch. Thank you so much, Coach Dill, for visiting with us. And uh, we will see you on the other side of this halftime break in just about five minutes. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. Where online makes really good sense is when you're kind of not the typical, I just graduated from high school and I want to have a college experience. I chose distance education because I was busy. I mean, I knew that our lives were kind of all over the place, everything that we were doing, and I wanted something that was flexible. My degree at SAGU allowed me to still be a mom and an educator and get my degree online. I was able to tuck my kids into bed and get everything that I needed to get done. And while laundry was going, I was studying. If you have any questions, certainly give me a call and shoot me an email and I'll be glad to help any way I can. We have an asynchronous program, so videos are going, students are accessing the course on their own schedule, which is a, a convenience of online education. So the online provides the way to get the academic uh, credit that you need to advance your career path, advance um, your learning and your skills. Well, a lot of what we were doing with our resident assistants was preparing them to teach their halls. And then, of course, I'd have the opportunity to teach as well. So I was training, but then I was also teaching the whole dorm. And so I found that a lot of the tools that I was getting from my classes was really helping me to prepare my RAs and to prepare myself to minister to our students. My master's degree in education at SAGU allowed me to have a bigger influence on more than just students but also 
educators. With the door that this degree opened, I was able to take this position that really didn't exist before I graduated, and I was able to move into that. In SAGU's philosophy, we want to connect students with a faculty member that is curating the content, and they are providing the content we feel is important for that particular course the way that is presented in SAGU's distinctive. I loved the way that they would give you quality feedback. It's not just a grade, but I want to know what you think about my work. My professor was fabulous, just was always there for me that entire semester, and I was able to graduate exactly when I expected to. The fact is, there is no back row in an online classroom. You can't get in the back of the class. You're either online and engaged, or you're not doing the work. The number one thing is their passion for students. You know, the customer service here, they're going to help you get across that finish line and do everything they can do to help you get there. You know, this is a place where if you're already in your career, you know what you want to do, and you just need that extra you know, skill set, you need that help to prepare you to be more successful, this is a very practical place to get your degree. Never say no to a lion. And we're back to third quarter action. Drovers, Lady Lions. Drovers get a good defensive set there. Nice block. Nice fundamental fast break there. Carrera converts. Extending the lead. Lions working the ball around. Trying to find some open lanes. DeRoe takes it in, gets a shot up, and draws the foul. That's what she does so well. Tamara DeRoe. Fastest feet on the court. Her claim to fame, always. And not a bad free throw shooter. She converts the first. And she converts the second into a 14 point game. The Lions have been able to just kind of keep it, and they did a good job in the second quarter of not letting the Drovers create even bigger leads. So that's a good positive that Coach Suns was able to take to the locker room. And now he's just got to find a way to get his young ladies to convert more baskets at a better percentage clip. And that's going to stay with the Drovers. Meadow was going to try to steal one. Referee said, no, no. Still Drovers ball. Three, two, 
Wow. Turn around, but Dorsey, no good. She doesn't miss many. Looked like DeRoe was hit on the arm. It goes out, Chastain gets the ball. Broken play, Chastain gets it up. Casher tips it away, gets her own rebound. And now it's a reset. DeRoe to Glenn. And Matter, Matter looking. Chastain calling for the ball. Matter doesn't get it to her. Floor spacing's bad. DeRoe gets a good look at a three-point shot. Just a little long. James converts. She is a really good free throw shooter. She comes in shooting 31% on the season. I mean, 30, uh, almost 33% from the three-point line. So she shoots better from the three than she does the two. Metter with a quick turnaround, bounces off. Casher clears the way, gets the rebound again. Hey, Lions taking their time. The road trying to set up. A little give and go option, no good. It gets tipped on her perimeter shot. And Carrera chases it down, but just couldn't save it. And smartly, that is a veteran play right there. If you can see this, watch this. She does chase her down. She gets her hands on it. A lot of players will try to, at, at that moment, reach back and just keep it back in play. And that is not a very smart play because you got uh, your opponents trailing. And that could have been an easy turnover. So... Very heads up play by Carrera there just to let it go out of bounds. Coach Matthews calls a timeout and he's gonna urge his team to get a little more fundamentally sound. But although that was a turnover, that was a good fundamental play by Carrera. You see Coach Sons there. And let's stick at it. Let's just keep, keep doing what we do it's going to fall. Keep shooting. They're getting good looks. They just need to convert. It's going to be Lady Lions ball all the way at the other end of the court. Baker to throw it in to Kara Glenn. Glenn's going to bring it up. They run the play for Baker to pop out at the top to get the three point and Another fantastic rebound by Alexis Cash. Glenn to Baker. Baker trying to create something. She goes to the baseline. Gets it down to Mendoza. Mendoza does not have a clear to go. Metter takes it down the line. And that is going to be a shot clock violation because... The ball did not touch the rim. Let's see. Nope. Did not touch the rim. Alexis Kasher just doing incredible offensive rebounding work. Keeping the ball alive. Creating second chance opportunities. Carrera with a bad pass to Zaria Dorsey. It goes off of Dorsey's fingertips out of bounds. That's going to be an unforced turnover by the Drovers. Lady Lions ball. 17 point lead. Baker trying to make something happen. A little too strong off the glass. Gets it down to Metter. Metter. Too hard off the iron. Gets a second rebound. Three possessions there. That's going to be off of Dorsey. But referee says it's going to go to the Drovers. I think Dorsey got pushed out of bounds. And instead of calling the foul, referee 
letting them play. James, long distance. She's been hitting quite a few. Mendoza loses the ball, gets it back, gets it to Glenn. Now Glenn's going to bring it up slowly. She creates a drive, goes hard to the basket, off the glass, no good. Palmer. Layup too strong. Palmer with good defense. And they're going to get her with the reach in foul on Mendoza. Palmer's assessed the foul while Mendoza was bringing the ball up. Lady Lions ball. Baker with another three point try. Off to the right. Oh, great pass. Great pass. Johnson does finish it off, but Dorsey to the other Johnson, 32, with a great touch pass to point guard Johnson. Oh, Chastain creating her own way. It looked like a broken play, but it, she's running back like she knew what she was doing. James with a wide open look and her 4-3 up the game. Wow. Very accurate. I think she's four of six tonight. Baker gets in. Defense gets a hand on it. Short. Dorsey up to Johnson. Johnson's going to get a nice layup. Outruns the Sagu defense on that fast break. Dorsey with a perfect pass through traffic in the middle. Great conversion. There's a timeout by Coach Sons. And that's going to be a 30 second timeout. And you see some of the key player stats, as well as your up to date. Game stats. Like they're shooting 21%. Just not going to be able to get it done uh, with that kind of conversion rate. Especially when the other team is shooting a little over 100% better than what you're shooting. 50% by the drovers from the three point line. That's incredible. Lady Lions doing a good job rebounding now. Kiara Glenn. Not sure what she was trying to do there. She missed a wide open layup opportunity on the right side. Goes under and then mishandles the ball. Goes out of bounds. Drovers. Possession now. To their half court set up. Johnson, that's going to be a charge, I believe. And Lexus Catcher, Catcher stands there. Wipe up uh, the floor really quickly. And Dorsey finally brings up the ball. Nice wheel action there. Little motion offense 
but too hard on the layup for Metter. It's going to be a no call. Zaria Dorsey misses the first one with the smaller DeRoe on her. DeRoe falls down, no call, appropriately so, and Dorsey converts. Patting her rebound stats. Met her with an air ball from three. Wow, nice give and go from James to Johnson. Johnson with an easy two. Johnson with the steal goes all the way down for an easy layup. Drovers just too good tonight. They're a very good basketball team and I fully expect to see them go deep in the conference tournament this year. Kerry Glenn, too strong off. Iron from the side, great rebound by Alexis Kasher, and an easy putback. James pulls up. From a long way away, good 25 feet. That was... Off the mark and out of bounds. Hold her in for the Lady Lions. For row. Kerry Glenn going all the way. Trying to create something. No foul. Here come the Jordans. Quickly. James. Another opportunity. Takes too long. She passes it up. Back to James. Off the mark again. Uncharacteristic. James missed two in a row. Mendoza from 35 feet. Hits off the front of the iron. That was actually pretty close. And that is the third quarter. Tamara DeRoe has 13 points. Kasher has 11 rebounds. And the leading scorer for the season for the team, Sidney Metter, is only coming in with four points tonight. Still getting a lot of clock, creating some rebound opportunities as well. Field goal percentage overall for the Drovers down 2%. Or I'm sorry, 4% on the three-point shooting. They were running a 50% clip. And just slightly down overall on the field. And the fourth quarter is underway. Mendoza gets a good cut through the defense into the paint, but bad pass over Chestang's head. And that's a unforced turnover. Alonzo, a little long. 
Chastain going to go all the way. Nice little Euro step. A reverse layup, almost no look. Somehow gets it to roll off the back of the iron and it goes in. They're gonna get a blocking foul. And that's gonna go against Doring Speranza. Number 22. She's still stating her case that I was hands straight up. Couldn't have been on me. But at this point in the game, 25-point lead. Three-point lead. Referee doesn't really want to hear that. Grover's well in control of this game. Bad pass, but it's off of Mendoza, so it's going to stay Drover's ball. Almost a line change, four in, four out. Chestane's the only one that stays on the court. Metter, Casher, Baker, and DeRoe are all on the court. We're going to get um, Drover's Miller with a travel. Nice dish out there. Didn't see the travel there, but I do know that we've seen the referees be more intentional about making that call. If you haven't put the ball on the ground and you lift up your pivot foot at all, even if it looks like it, they call the travel. And there's going to be another timeout by Coach Sons. I mean, Co uh, Coach Matthews for that. USAO Drovers. Dorsey has 18 points, one point away from her season average. And uh, I want to say she's had more than two rebounds. Um, so maybe the uh, stats program hasn't caught up yet. She averages eight rebounds a game, almost nine. Probably. And I would anticipate she averages a double-double come tournament time. Caitlin Johnson, though, adding in 14 points of her own. And Tori James with 15 points. A lot of contribution by the Drovers this evening. They Lions still having fun out there on the court. Big smiles. Giving it their all. And that's going to be out on Chestain. Drover's ball. From the corner, Miller puts another one in. She's got a good looking shot. Lead is 26. Ball down to Chestain. Let her back to Chestain. Chestain gets it in. Stays home in the paint. Makes herself available and Metter saw it. Good pass. Miller gets blocked by Chestain. Chestain doing good things, but she comes down after the block with the ball landing on the baseline. This is great defense. Block and stays home. Gets it. Just lands out of bounds. Justine gets her hands on the ball again, and it goes out of bounds. Good defense. Miller. She can shoot that. She does. Her third 
three-pointer of the evening. She is not scared. DeRoe needs one to fall. It does not, though. Metter gets the rebound, gets it back over to Chestang. Chestang says she's going to take it on her own, misses the layup. Miller, nice little dish on the fast break. The layup is too strong, and Carrera was there to tip it, gets it back to Miller. Miller puts it back up. Well, it goes directly to Miller. No one trying to get the rebound. She gets the gift and the second gift with the and one attempt. She gets all three the hard way. That's a 30-point lead for the Drovers. Seven minutes. If you're the Lady Lions, you just got to work on your offense, creating some good fundamental play. Trying to create some momentum for the future. It's going to be a foul, I believe, on Dorsey. Puts Casher on the charity stripe. Casher, a pretty good free throw shooter. She gets the first. Second long, Dorsey gets another rebound. Miller, another attempt, beautiful shot. The rotation is just getting even more solid as she shoots. It's four for her. Fantastic three-point shooter in Miller. Crazy shot by DeRoe. Fast break. Getting it to Miller again. It goes off the rim. Miller goes out of bounds. Back inbounds. Get the rebound. Puts another shot back up. That's going to be a foul either on DeRoe or Casher. It's going to send Carrera to the line. Number three, Carrera. Second leading score for this Drover team comes in averaging 13 points a game. She misses the first free throw attempt. She shoots 81% on the year. Rare miss. Rare two misses. But Miller gets the rebound. She's just backing her way down. They're going to say she traveled. Chestang providing the defense there. Call Alexis Casher with the charge. Just driving her way through in the paint there. It's actually a good pass by Metter. She can't believe it. Carrera. With a nice move to the basket and converts the easy two. Chastain fakes, gives it up, back to Metter. Metter trying to make it go. Casher for the rebound and an easy put back. Nice dish to the cutting baseline cutter, Miller. She converts easily. She's getting a bunch of points here in the second half. So 
Mustang cuts to the paint. Does not get the friendly roll, but Casher gets the well-earned rebound. It's a restart for the half-court offense for the Lady Lions. Metter trying to make things work. Does not. It's going to be out off of the Lady Lions. Lily Hanna comes in. Kara Glenn comes in for DeRoe and Chastain. So you have Metter, Hannah, Kasher, Mendoza, and Kiara Glenn on the floor for the Lions. Joy Speranza with a nice pass down. They're going to say she was on the baseline. Carrera kind of tripped or lost her footing, fell down. Kept her dribble very nice, but dribbled on the baseline. Better trying to do some paint work. She draws the foul. She's going to get two free ones. Number 32, Johnson, her second person. That's going to be a charge on 32 Johnson. And she just takes it hard in. I'm not sure I saw a charge there, but so says the referee, and that's the way it goes. Mendoza, three point try. Mendoza is going to draw the foul. Johnson. Or Mendoza is going to get the foul. Johnson draws it. And she's going to get two free ones from her missed layup attempt. Both no good. She intercepts it. That's the opportunity. No good. Mendoza on the floor gets it. Now pushing. She is going to be rung up with a charge. She couldn't get the dribble under control. Therefore, it's hard to get her head up to see where she was. And she runs in to Johnson. Miller, head fake from the three. They got to respect that. She just goes around with ease. Gets an easy layup. Kara Glenn, no good. Good defense by Kiara Glenn. Gets the steal. Stop and pop in the lane. No good. Catch it with another rebound. Hannah keeps it alive. Although Kiara Glenn gets it. Alexa Casher. Gets a couple rebounds in that set. And uh, now a timeout is called by the Drovers. Coach Matthews trying to keep his team in check with such a big lead. It's tough to not get real sloppy and 
And it's very important to coaches that even in blowouts like this situation, that you keep your team, whoever it is on the floor, uh, headstrong inside the game and executing as flawlessly as possible, no matter what, because uh, that's just what the game is about, focus, playing the best you can play all the time. Holder gets it to Hannah. Hannah, high arching shot, short. Speranza, couple attempts off the loose ball there and no good. Under two minutes to play. Holder. Trying to create her own shot. Does a good job, but uh, comes up short. Doreen Speranza. Speranza get a second attempt, and she gets knocked down. I think they're going to say that was on the floor. So no free throws. Miller creates from the baseline. She draws the foul. She's going to get to shoot two free ones. Bring it up. Mendoza. Creating from the top. Nice dish from Kiara Glenn to Alexis Kasher. Catcher patting her rebound stats. Getting two rebounds, three shots off before she collects a foul. Draws the foul. And she's going to get two free throws. First one is no good. Casher to shoot the second free throw. And it is short but bounces in with a friendly roll. The lead for the Drovers is 35. Asher was likely fouled there, but no call by the ref. Good no call. Hannah gets the ball. She gets it up to Holder. Holder tries to run the fast break. No good. Mendoza sees an open, kind of open. Casher gets a good pass to her. Casher converts. During Spronza, nice little turn, semi hook type of shot. It counts. Mendoza drives and draws the foul. Six seconds left. Mendoza gets the first. 
adds to her point total for this evening with another nothing but net and there you have it the ball game is in the books officially 83 to 50 is your final score the drovers leave with a 33 point win over your lady lions it's a tough season for the lady lions and first year head coach michael sons recruiting and the covid uh, has been has wreaked havoc really on some of the recruiting and those possibilities and therefore he's got a very young and inexperienced team that he's working with these young ladies are going to just have to dig deep and try to find a way to improve their basketball skills throughout the rest of this season and come up and show up to be competitive in these games Well, stay tuned for a high-flying circus act on a basketball floor. Both of these teams are filled with athletic talent. You will see a lot of dunks, a lot of fast-paced action in part two of this doubleheader when the men's Sagu Lions team plays host to the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma men's basketball team in just about 25 minutes. We're going to send you off uh, for a little break and some commercial action, but we will be back in about 20 minutes to do a matchup review and introduce you to what we think is going to happen in this fantastic matchup between the Lions and the Drovers. You are watching the Sagu Sports Network.